Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, happy Monday. It is September 18th and welcome back. Thank you. Yes. Good Under the weather, you. good part of last week, but uh, feeling much better today. Good, good. Glad to have you and glad you came in on a nice cool morning considering. Yeah, not <laughs> bad. During the early edition of uh, GMSA, got down into the lower 70s, which is a nice change of pace, Justin. It feels so very good outside this weekend. It felt great too. We had some drier air work and that always helps us get the temperature down in the morning. Uh, we deserve some of this right after the summer that we've had. And when you see the forecast, you're really going to think that we deserve this kind of weather. It, uh, it is nice. So let's look at the numbers right now. 79 here in San Antonio. So it is warming up. 79 in the Braunfels, 77 Seguin, Bernie, 70. You see the numbers changing right before our eyes. 71 right now in Kerrville. And as uh, we look at the headlines, it is going to be the last week of summer. Yes, uh, fall officially starts on Saturday, but it will feel like it. September, could it be another record month temperature wise? We'll look into that and there is a front in the forecast, but there's questions as to whether or not it will make it and just how much rainfall it will bring. We'll show you that right now. 79 dew point is at 63. That number is climbing in the forecast today. Noontime 86. We'll take it up to about 95. So yes, yeah, still pretty summer like mostly sunny skies as we head into the afternoon and not much of a rain chance. Let's see how the roads are looking this morning. We'll check in with Stephen for the latest here. Good morning, sir. They look okay. Justin, um, you know, we had some issues out there earlier this morning. They have cleared out, but check out 410 at Starcrest. Some of these trans guide cameras are moving pretty quickly, and uh, thankfully we're not spotting major problems out there. 281 near the quarry, you can see we have some long shadows out there. And hey, pack those sunglasses if you plan on hitting the roads in the next few minutes. 90 at General McMillan, it looks like you're going to need them. But I haven't seen any major issues. We did obviously have a busy morning rush, but things have dwindled down since then. Uh, there's at least one crash still lingering around here along I 35 northbound at Thousand Oaks Drive. We still have a little bit of a backup, but I talked to our friends at Transguide. It doesn't look like we have any cameras that could capture the conditions out there. I'll watch it closely, but it's really only causing a minor delay with traffic. The wide view of the map shows plenty of relief out there. We again had a very busy start to our morning. Things have quieted down. Plenty of green on the screen, but be on the lookout later tonight. We have road work taking place or bridge work. I should say along I 10 over on the east side of Bear County. This takes us all the way up until Friday, September 22nd. So pack your patience overnight nine in the evening at five in the morning. That's when we'll see alternating full closures of the main lanes in both directions, east and west at FM 1518. A lot of information, but if you scan this QR code, that information will be at your fingertips. It takes you directly to our case at traffic page. There's a full list of closures on our website, which I updated earlier this morning, so just plan your commute ahead of time and make sure to know before you go, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Here's today's nine at nine. The five Americans who had been imprisoned in Iran are expected to be released today as part of a wider U.S.-Iran deal. That's according to Iran's foreign ministry. The U.S. government had designated all five Americans as being wrongfully detained. The deal will remove a major nuisance between Washington and Tehran, although the two sides remain deeply at odds over several issues. No signs of a deal yet in the auto workers' strike against Detroit's big three automakers. The UAW is set to resume talks today with Ford and Stellantis after it spoke with GM yesterday. Right now, it's holding targeted strikes at three plants, one from each company. The strike is also now threatening the livelihoods of workers who have not walked off the job. A potential government shutdown is getting closer by the minute. Some progress was made over the weekend. A group of House Republicans have come to terms on a short-term funding bill. But even if they approve the bill, it will likely be squashed by the Democratic-led Senate. And the clock is still ticking to the deadline at the end of the month. Stocks may head into today on a bit of an upswing. Overnight futures pointing to a slightly higher open to start the week after the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ all lost ground Friday. Top of mind for many on Wall Street is this week's two-day meeting for the Federal Reserve. The wide expectation is that the Fed will leave interest rates alone. Goldman Sachs is already looking ahead to the Fed's next meeting at the end of October. Analysts think it's unlikely it'll raise interest rates then either, and they say if inflation continues to cool off, we could see gradual interest rate cuts next year. The American Red Cross is asking people to roll up their sleeves. The nonprofit organization is facing a shortage. They say distribution to hospitals and medical centers is now far outpacing donations being made. 
Supply levels fell nearly 25% since early August because of a drop in donations and back-to-back -back months of climate-driven disasters. With student loan repayments due to begin in October, the Wall Street Journal now estimates that could pull about $100 billion of spending out of the U.S. economy over the next year. Apple is rolling out iOS 17 today, including a series of new features for iPhones. The new operating system includes a standby mode with information users can see from a distance when your iPhone is charging. And there's live voicemail that transcribes messages in real time. TikTok is looking to give its online marketplace a boost. TikTok Shop will offer discounts for the holiday shopping season. The hope is that slashing prices up to 50% will spur competition with the likes of Amazon and Walmart. And that's today's Nine at Nine. The Andy Morning Headlines, deputies in Southern California taking precautions after what appears to be the ambush killing of one of their own. Plus a comedian accused of sexual assault from over a decade ago. And you have to wonder how much one of the founders of Rolling Stone actually knows about music. David Sears is here to explain all of our headlines. Very interesting story about this guy. So we'll get that in just a second. But first, we've got some breaking news. We just got this in CNN reporting a person has been detained concerning that apparent ambush and murder of a deputy in Southern California. Off-duty deputies there told to keep their identity as an officer hidden after that apparent ambush at a red light. And now there is a $250,000 reward for information that is leading to the killer or killers of that deputy, Ryan Klinkenbrumer. Once again, a person has been detained. This is surveillance video that the local ABC station in LA was able to obtain. It's now part of that investigation. The video shows the deputy in his patrol car shooting at an intersection. He had just left the Palmdale station. A dark colored vehicle pulls up on the driver's side, slows down and takes off. Klinkenbrumer was found slumped over. He later died at the hospital. The 30 year old officer had just gotten engaged earlier in the week. It was a son. He was a grandson. He had just been engaged four days ago. He had so much ahead of him. And this coward or cowards took his life to apprehending the suspects. And I'm gonna continuously refer to them as cowards because that's what they are, cowards, to attack a deputy sheriff in uniform in a black and white who's just sitting there at a red light Last night, there was a vigil held for the fallen officer. Hundreds of folks gathered outside the Palmdale station to pay their respects. Once again, CNN telling us that there is a person of interest being detained. Five women have come forward claiming that comedian Russell Brand sexually assaulted, raped and abused them. One of the victims was 16 years old at the time. The accusation is coming out in an in-depth collaborative documentary by multiple British media organizations. Four women anonymous, one speaking out. Brand coming out with a full-fledged denial. I was pushing him away, pushing him away, and so I ended up having to punch him really hard in the stomach to get him off. And I was crying, and he said, oh, I only want to see your mascara run anyway. Amidst this litany of astonishing, rather baroque attacks are some very serious allegations that I absolutely refute. I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. Once again, the timeline of accusations is from 2006 to 2013. Brand was married to Katy Perry for just over a year. He actually let her know he was getting a divorce via text. He's now married. He's 48. He's got two kids. There are investigations going on in London and in L.A. at the offices where the women say the alleged attacks took place. No reports have been filed. The co-founder of Rolling Stone magazine, Jan Winner, more like a loser today, he lost his leadership position at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for what he said about certain singers and musicians. Jan did an interview with the New York Times about a book he wrote called The Masters. It was about singers and musicians. In his book, he failed to include any women or black singers. They were all white men like Mick Jagger, John Lennon, Bono. No blacks or women. Here's his explanation. It's not that they're not creative geniuses. It's not that they're inarticulate, although go have a deep conversation with Grace Slick or Janice. Please be my guest. You know? Joni was not a philosopher of rock and roll. She didn't, in my mind, meet that test, not by her work, not by other interviews she did. For just for public relations sake, maybe I should have 
gone and found uh, one black and one woman artist to include here. They didn't measure up to that same historical standards just to, to avert this kind of criticism. Of course, he caught a ton of flack and apologized for not recognizing women and black artists. It just fell together that way, he said. He also said in retrospect, he wished he had interviewed Marvin Gaye and Otis Redding. <laughs> mm. So much to say, so little time. How? Really? Yeah. Really? Huh. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> and he spends a little time sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the tide roll away. <laughs> maybe so, maybe <laughs> so. Dave. How in the world is, never mind. <laughs> yes. Great. Oh, there's so much I'd love to see. Yeah. yeah, thank you. <laughs> 908, 78 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. Well, David, we'll be back with RJ to talk about the Cowboys win yesterday over the Jets. The boys taking down both New York teams to give them an undefeated start to the season. But first, the San Antonio Food Bank offers several volunteer opportunities, including here at this historic farm. How you can get involved next. 9-12 for Hunger, Hunger Action Month. We're exploring volunteer opportunities at the San Antonio Food Bank. Well, Tiffany Huertas joins us live from the Mission San Juan Farm, where volunteers can get involved growing crops. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. The San Antonio Food Bank has several opportunities where you can volunteer, from warehouses to maybe a community kitchen or at this historic farm. And you can hang out with this cool guy right here, Mitch. Good morning, Mitch. Good morning. Great to see you. Great to be here. Tell us a little bit about the volunteer opportunities and Hunger Action Month. So Hunger Action Month is all through September. This is a, a, a nationally designated time for people to support food banks and other organizations that are fighting hunger. This site is part of 50 acres at Mission San Juan, which is a national park we have here in San Antonio. And the San Antonio Food Bank has the ability to farm on this site. And so some of these are the crops that we're actually cultivating for the community here. We have peaches, squash, we're about to plant beets, turnips, radishes, all sorts of other really good stuff. So when they come here, it's a full experience. They can volunteer and learn, and then they can share that information to the community. How important is this month? So September is a time that the rest of the year for us rotates around. And so this is a really important time for people to be able to come out, participate, see how our operations are, and really contribute their, uh, their time and their voice. Last year, how much did you all produce here? This site produced about 300,000 pounds of produce, and that produce went to the community to um, allow our soils here to really sustain the, the people who live in San Antonio. Amazing. That's a lot of food right yes. there. A big impact. And show us, what, what do we have here? So this is just one of our native squashes. And so we are actually able to cultivate uh, all sorts of really amazing stuff. This is a squash that's native to this Perfect for our national park site here in San Antonio. Wow, this is beautiful. <laughs> Take a look at that. That's amazing. What is your part about working here? Combining sustainability and trying to fight food insecurity is a really amazing privilege. And so being able to actually cultivate in the dirt to be able to try to sustain our community partners, that's something we're really proud of. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing all of that information. Again, you, we are going to continue this conversation. On Friday, we're having a town hall from 2.30 to 3.30, and we're going to be live streaming that on KSAT.com. So there's a lot of information we want to share with you, all the volunteer opportunities. We're going to provide that for you. Very cool live stream happening on Friday. We'll send it back to you. Thank you, Tiffany. Let's go outside with live cam. 79 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. Beautiful start to the work week. It was a very nice weekend. I know you did some yard work, Justin. I did, I did. Got out and uh, did some yard work. The yard is still pretty brown, yeah. but it's it's starting to green up a little bit. Ah. Signs of life. Yeah. Uh, a little bit. And, be and before you send me those angry emails, uh, I didn't get any rain in my house. What happened? No, uh, we know it's not I was you. just going to send you one of those. <laughs> uh, crafting it right now. Uh, let me show you the rainfall map. So this was over the last 72 hours since Friday. And look at San Antonio. We were surrounded. Uh, basically just a big hole right over us. It, you know, that's just the, the luck of the draw. That's how it goes sometimes. But Ozona, Junction, Austin, College Station, Houston, Victoria, Corpus Christi, down to our south, Catua, or not Catua, Laredo, that should say Laredo, all got rain. We did not. And uh, that's just how it went. The storms just uh, seemed to avoid us. 
And uh, again, that's just how it goes sometimes. I also want to talk about the heat. You may have noticed it's oh, it's been a ridiculous summer so far. Hottest summer on record. Uh, we had the uh, hottest August, hottest uh, second hottest July. Well, as it goes right now, we're pacing to have one of the hottest September's on record. Uh, just goes with this year. That's just how it's been. And we still have a lot of month left. And by the time we get to the end of the month, sometimes we can get some good cold fronts. So this could change. But at the moment, if September were to end today, it would be the hottest on record. Pretty incredible. As we go outside for you right now, we've got uh, mostly clear skies, 79 degrees. Heat index is at 81. So there's a little bit of humidity out there. New Braunfels 79, Seguin 77, Bernie 72. It feels all right, uh, but temperatures will warm up pretty significantly today. And the dew point trend, well, the reason we've seen some pretty comfortable temperatures is because the air has been dry. Uh, but we'll start to see that dew point jump up too. So it gets a little more humid by the end of the week and by the weekend. Now, if we could turn that into some rain, that humidity, that would be great. There is a chance by the end of, well, into the weekend, maybe into Sunday. Forecast today, 89 degrees by 1 o'clock. We'll make it up to around 95 degrees today. That'll be our high temperature. So that's that's above average. 89 at 8 o'clock, 85, 9 p.m., 83 at 10 p.m. And here's the bigger picture, and it's remarkably quiet here across the country. So we're still waiting on some of those big fall systems to take shape, where you get a big area of low pressure tracking across the middle part of the country that would bring some thunderstorms and some colder weather just hasn't taken shape yet, so it's still pretty quiet. We do have some showers up and down the uh, east coast, but uh, nothing much here. So as we look at our forecast going forward, remember the heat high? Of course we remember it. We hate it. Uh, but it's starting to make a comeback. It nudges in by Thursday and Friday, and that means the heat comes back. Not record heat, but close to it. And so be prepared for some upper 90s potentially by Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, as this heat high shifts back in. Now, what about some relief? Well, we get one of those areas uh, of low pressure working across the country. It's pretty far north, but some of that energy tries to push a front into our area by Sunday. It'll get close. Can't guarantee it'll move through. In fact, a lot of the models want to stall it just north of San Antonio, but I think it gets close enough to maybe at least generate some rain. That's the idea anyway. So as you look at the extended forecast, uh, 95 Monday, 95 Tuesday, we'll go as high as 97. Wednesday, Thursday, I think even Friday could be really hot. Even Saturday could be pretty hot as fall officially begins on Saturday, by the way, at 149 in the morning. And right on cue, we do get a, that front getting close to us on Sunday. We'll put in a 20% chance of rain, but uh, not, not huge chances right now. Mm, 149 in the morning, we will celebrate. We will celebrate. <laughs> I don't know if much changes, uh, you know, weather-wise, but... Hopefully okay. something, you know, down the road uh, makes things look a little bit. In better. the middle of the night, in the silence of night, you'll hear somebody go, "Happy fall, y'all." <laughs> <laughs> yes. That will be me. Somewhere. Yeah. That Over will in be Steph's me. Steph's neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 919, 79 degrees. In honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, we are learning about the first Tejana to be featured on U.S. currency. Our Camelia Juarez will tell us about her legacy in San Antonio. There is still time left to register for the 10th annual Head for the Cure race this weekend. The event raises money and awareness for brain cancer. It takes place Saturday morning in front of Providence Catholic School on North St. Mary's. And you can register for the race at headforthecure.org slash San Antonio. And if you use the code KSET, you will get a $5 discount. So we look forward to seeing everyone out there again September 23rd at 8 a.m. Good luck keeping up with Steph. Oh, he's so funny. <laughs> Jovita Idar was an activist that fought for Mexican Americans during a time of segregation. And now decades later, she is set to first be the first Tejana to be featured on U.S. currency. And our Camelia Juarez tells us why her legacy in San Antonio is worth being remembered. It's not every day you get to be related to somebody who's on American currency. Daniel Lopez is a descendant of Jovita Idar. She was born in Laredo in 1885 and spent the second half of her life in San Antonio's West Side. These are stories we grew up with. Uh, we didn't learn about Jovita in school or in articles. We heard about her growing up in our family. Lopez is hoping more people will learn Ida's legacy now that the U.S. Mint and the Smithsonian made her part of the American Women's Quarter Program. Who inspires change? Jovita Idar. 
making her the first Tejana featured on U.S. currency. Idar was on the front lines of Mexico. She was a journalist, activist, and suffragist that advocated for the rights of Mexican Americans. She encouraged women to be involved in public policy. She talked about everything, the lynchings, the discrimination that was going on, the school segregation, um, the just the unfairness of, of the social structure of that time period. Very courageous for the time. In the early 1900s, San Antonio was experiencing a tuberculosis endemic, and the city's west side wasn't part of the city's sanitation system, allowing diseases there to spread easier. She worked at the Robert B. Green Hospital, which was the charity hospital on the west side. They had a lot of tuberculosis patients there, so she was a translator, and she also taught classes in sanitation to try to help people stay healthy in those environments. Idad wrote a newsletter about why women should vote and become educated. Her famous quote is, when you educate a woman, you educate a family. This Mexican-American act Lopez now hopes more people will dig into their own family history. Just start asking questions because you might find a Jovita in that history. Camilio Juarez, Quesa 12 News. 925, 79 degrees. There's more ahead on Team SA at 9. Including a look at your morning sports with David and RJ. The guys are breaking down this weekend's matchups as the Dallas Cowboys and Texas Longhorns continue to roll. Plus, A&M also got a big win. Uh, before that, how the San Antonio Police Department is planning on making the most of the increase of officers they'll be getting thanks to the city's new budget. Soon, the San Antonio Police Department will have more personnel on the job. Avery Everett shows us how items in the city's new budget could help the police department and in turn better help the community. He's deceased. A suspect shot and killed by SAPD. He was armed with a knife. It happened late Saturday night on the south side on Roosevelt Avenue, all after what police called an altercation. He also wound up having to use deadly force. That's just one of the four confirmed shootings overnight that SAPD responded to. These shootings come in a month already marked with five SAPD officers shot in a span of two weeks. But with the passing of the city council's spending plan this past week, more staff is budgeted for SAPD. We need to increase the number of officers uh, who, who need to help. The budget allows for the San Antonio Police Department to add 105 police officers. It's the single largest increase to the department in more than 20 years. But that's not the only budget item involving SAPD. During budget talks this summer, City Council really wanted to expand the city's mental health response. Now they're adding more money to achieve this around the clock. Right now, we know when the peak times are and we want to make sure we have people here for those peak times. The budget allows for the San Antonio Community Outreach and Resiliency Effort, or SA Corps, to work around the clock. They're the team made up of a trained police officer, SAFD paramedic, and a licensed mental health clinician to respond to mental health calls. Right now, they only work 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. But starting next summer, this program will have three teams with around-the-clock coverage for mental health. We want to make sure we have people here for those peak times. As for the mental health unit at SAPD, increasing its staffing is a top priority for the department. We're a very large city, and unfortunately, we see um, a lot of mental health issues. This budget becoming a support for SAPD. We need more officers. In the mental health unit, we do, and we will eventually get there. But only one step in securing specialized response for San Antonio. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. So while SAPD waits to expand its mental health unit, they tell us they're actively training all their officers on mental health response. We are all told that it took three full years to fully train all the officers in that department. Let's go outside again with live cam, and then we're going to take a look at uh, weekend sports out there. Beautiful start to the Monday. We've already talked about that. Nice to see temperatures down into the lower 70s this morning. Yeah, it does really feel good. Now, temperatures are starting to rise now. It is going to be a rather hot afternoon. We're looking at mid-90s for highs, but starting to see some signs of fall, right? Uh, let me show you a picture here on KSAC Connect. The acorns starting to show up. I think that's what this is. Look, I'm not a tree expert, so if you're a... If you're a tree expert at home, you want to correct me, uh, please do. Uh, but I believe that is uh, acorn signs of autumn, and this is about the time they start to fall on the oak trees. Uh, so great shot. We appreciate it. Now, if we could just get those leaves to change colors, that's a ways down the road, but that would uh, that would be great. Temperatures across the state right now, 66 in Amarillo, 72 Wichita Falls. You go uh, 81 in Corpus Christi, 83 in Brownsville. Still pretty warm for the entire state of Texas. And our forecast today uh, takes us up to about uh, 86 by noontime. Uh, then we jump into the 90s. 95, the 
forecast high by four and five o'clock. And we'll call it partly cloudy. We'll see some puffy cumulus clouds develop, but no rain in the forecast and then down into the 80s tonight. Uh, and very quickly, I want to show you a quick traffic incident we have going on. This is at I-35, near I-35 of Wiener northbound. Getting reports of a car fire there. It does look like it's starting to cause some slowdowns as you're on I-35. So just uh, be aware of that. Uh, we'll have some more on that if uh, we can get some more information coming up in just a bit. Guys. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Yeah, three lanes blocked out there, Justin. So it is a big deal right now. 35,000 Oaks area. Thank you, Justin. And well, the Cowboys are 2 0 to start the season, and the Longhorns continue to move up the poles. Let's see the smile from my Longhorn. There it is. Okay, <laughs> David is back with RJ to break down the football weekend. <laughs> How about them Cowboys, How about David? Them Cowboys. How about them Longhorns, huh? What a weekend. <laughs> yeah. So much going on. I, got to, I had to bring notes today. Oh, yeah, there was a lot going on yeah, this week. A lot happening. Let's start with the Cowboys. Yeah, let's go ahead and start with the Cowboys okay, here. It's their home opener here, taking on uh, the Aaron Rodgers less New York Jets. Zach Wilson getting the start for the Boy, Jets. He, here, he had a rough day yesterday. Yes, he did. <laughs> Cowboys were uh, on it from the mm -hmm. beginning. There are some concerns that I have, but we'll talk of about that in just you a do. second. Let's talk <laughs> about how great do. their offense played in the first half mm -hmm. and the defense is just uh, that guy right yeah. there. Uh, Micah Parsons right now is on a different level. I mean, yeah. he is dominating offenses right now. Again, two games into the season. Hopefully he stays healthy the rest of the way here, but he has just been unbelievable. Where's and then you mentioned here, Zach? nice balance here. Way to go, Dak. Oh, see, go. there you go. Dak. Micah Parsons should be considered <laughs> yeah. for MVP. For, absolutely, yes. To start the first the yeah, way, couple already. of weeks of the season. Yeah. Already. Um, well, here we go, David. We had uh, one play here from the Jets where they showed a little bit of life there. Uh, was that the touchdown? <laughs> and I think we lost. Yes, that, that, that was the. <laughs> we don't see that. We don't see the touchdown. No, I think okay. that was the interception. How good is the Cowboys course. defense? They're really good. Ten I mean, points, they're top. It. Uh, yeah, top uh, two, three defenses Ten in the points. league right now. They yeah. had how many, what, they had three sacks yesterday. Uh, three sacks, a couple of big turnovers there. I think that was going to be the interception there by Jaron Curse. Yeah, yeah. Three picks. Trayvon Diggs got one late. And a fumble. And the fumble, Micah Parsons. Fumbly, he stripped the ball, picked it up, should have gotten a touchdown there, yeah. but they counted him down just because the other guy's leg touched him while he was on the ground. But, uh, yeah, impressive stuff. So the Eagles went over the weekend, the 49ers mm -hmm. went over the weekend, mm -hmm. and the Cowboys went. Those are, those are your top three those teams three. in the, in the yeah. NFC. Here's a concern about the Cowboys. Okay. They went 30 to 10. Something here. Defense, <laughs> defense is stifling. Uh, they went 30 to 10. They scored 30 it. points. Uh -huh. Five field goals. Mm -hmm. Five. Mm -hmm. They okay. got four turnovers. Yes. They scored six lousy points off of two turnovers. That was it. That's all they scored off of four turnovers with yeah. six points. Yeah. Five field goals. They only scored two touchdowns, and Dak missed a right. wide open tight end in the end zone yesterday. Okay. I would say this. The okay. Jets defense – Pretty good. One of the better defenses okay. in the, the in the uh, NFL. We saw that they kind of kept them in this game. Probably should have gone up 14-10 with that kid. Sauce Gardner would have had that pick six. Another mistake there that yeah. Dak probably yeah. would have yeah. yeah had in this that game. But still, Jets defense pretty solid. But yeah, you're right. In the red zone, Cowboys definitely struggle to uh, get uh, touchdowns there on the board. Well, and Dak hasn't thrown an interception yet this year, has no. he? No. Well, you know the chance. No, I'm just saying. I'm giving him credit. I'm just saying. Am I right? Like, not yet. Well, he should have had one yesterday. He should have had one yesterday. But they also changed the offense for him. He's not throwing bombs down the field and making crazy plays. He threw. C.D. Lamb had 11 catches yesterday for like 100. Wait, hold on. 143 yards, 11 catches. There you go. And he was open on every one of those. There's yeah. a couple that were, that were pretty tight, but mm -hmm. but he was able to find the spaces. He's not throwing deep right. balls anymore. He's throwing medi medium mm -hmm. to short I, passes. Yeah. And these guys, because they have such athletic skills, there it's you know the yards after catch, mm -hmm. the yak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so he's I, not he's not trying I, to you know force yeah. it down the field. I after. still think he could throw the long ball. I think the big difference well, can, we're seeing is McCarthy's play team. calling over mm -hmm. Kellen Moore being cute with his play yeah. calling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think right now the mode is hey we got a great defense. Yeah. Uh, let's yep. kind of ride that. Just don't make any sort of major mistakes as we move along. Get the running game going there. You saw they stuck to the running game. They weren't having much success. But Tony Pollard got like 25 carries. Uh, their backup mm -hmm. got a good amount of carries there. They so. had 134 yeah. yards rushing total. Yeah. Pollard has 72. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing that concerns you, though, is when they start getting into the Eagles and they start getting yep. into the 49ers, you've got to mm -hmm. score more than, than five field goals. Five field goals and go win it. I don't, I don't think. That's my own no, personal No, definitely opinion. not. You've yeah. got to get the ball in the end zone, so that's, that's what he's got to work yeah. on. They, gotta, they can't get in the red zone. They can't get four turnovers and score six lousy points. Yeah, yeah. So Agreed on that. That's all, that's all I'm saying. <laughs>
That's all. I mean, it's great. Love them. Yeah. They're 2-0. Oh. Let's yeah. keep going. 2-0, and, oh, and then they play the Cardinals up yeah. next. So, I, I mean, Ooh. how much of a challenge are you going to get from the Cardinals? The Cardinals Ooh. had a 20-point lead yesterday, yes. blew that, and lost yeah. to the Giants so. in the last second uh, field goal there from the Giants. All right. Texans have something to Here celebrate. Here we go. Oh, they do? Okay, yeah. David. C.J. Stroud finally <laughs> threw, a, threw a touchdown pass. His first one of his career. So. Yes. So we'll go yeah. with that. Okay. Did you, did you we'll really take expect that. anything we'll out of the that. Texans this year? No, nothing okay. at all. <laughs> I mean, He's except checking. just a, improvement. I was a little that. disappointed here. They uh, their home opener there in Houston at uh, NRG Stadium, and they came out I think pretty flat. I think yeah. they let Indianapolis kind of get to them a little bit early, and uh, it was not uh, I was not great there. For disappointed the in the Texas defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely. Sure. I thought they'd be a little better because you got to have a defense to play to help your young quarterback. Getting a groove, you gotta, you know, your defense can't be doing that all the time. Right, time. and and actually, yeah. Indianapolis's quarterback went out on that play yeah. uh, due to a so concussion there, is. and uh, Houston just this down. could not uh, get back in this game. Zip, yeah, touchdown. that was nice. I don't know if he was drive. meant to throw it to him, but I didn't know. He, he was still <laughs> talking about after the well, yeah. he talked about after the game how his shoulder was hurt. Yeah, I didn't mm. realize he was injured. So I, but anyway, I, I right. thought Indy played kind of like I was hoping Houston would play right. the game. You know, yeah. that, that would be just a complete flip the script. Mm-hmm. This going to be a tough year for you. Yeah, too. yeah d- uh, definitely tough way to go. All right. Lose to the Colts at home. Yeah. Are, All you, right. are you ready? Here we go. Stephanie. Yeah. Hook them, hook them. Woo. There we go. Steph. That was pretty. There you go. That, <laughs> that was, was pretty. Well, <laughs> well, it was not pretty well, for the first started, three quarters of the game. Slow. <laughs> Steph couldn't watch it, so I was trying to keep her updated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mark was letting me know how, wow. how they didn't get off to such a great start. No, no. Uh, <laughs> they finally turned it on here in the fourth quarter. Xavier Worthy, nice play there. Jonathan Brooks kind of held UT together for a minute. Quinn Ewers didn't have a great game. I mean, kind of coming off of that Bama game. Yeah. Did not uh, did not play great, but you know what? Did enough to get it done Boom. there for Texas. Scored. And 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 just a little concern. Nothing. Oh. Nothing to write home about. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they wait till the fourth. I mean, even Sark was talking about this at his mm-hmm. post game press conference. We can't wait till the fourth quarter mm-hmm. to start scoring. We got to score earlier and often because you're not going to be able to score 21 every every game in yeah. the fourth quarter. Yeah. So that's the concern for the for the Texas offense is well, and one of those was a was a pick six. Yeah, so that, that one scored, that we just saw right there. They scored yeah. two touchdowns in the fourth quarter and you can't wait to the fourth quarter when you get into the Big 12. Because a lot of these teams in the Big 12 they start off slow like mm-hmm. Baylor and TCU. Well, they play Baylor next week. Yeah, but they're starting Waco. to get a little bit yeah. better so they got Baylor in Waco. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's going to be that's fun. Gonna be, um, gonna be fun. <laughs> I, I mean, Wyoming, solid team, uh, came yep. in and definitely gave him a uh, you know a tough matchup there. But UT now ranked third in the top 25. I think this is the highest ranking for UT since 2010, yes, which is when right. they went to the yep. uh, BCS championship game. Yep, that's I a whole other right. discussion. The AP pool. That's <laughs> just that's just all right. That's, well, got I mean, some grace. T- <laughs> Tennessee dropped like 13. 13 yeah, slots. Yeah, yeah, they're ranked 23rd. And now. it was it was amazing. And, and Alabama won. They dropped three. They dropped Texas three wins, too. and they yeah. go up one. And then there's a bunch of stuff in between. So it's just like it's like really weird. A and M. How about those Aggies? Hey, look at them. All right, Whoop. Connor Wigman here. Kind of a, kind of a quiet <laughs> clap. He's like, who'd they play, Justin? ULM. Yeah, okay. ULM, the Warhawks. All right, now Those we get into Warhawks. SEC play. Are yeah. you ready for SEC play, Justin? Uh, we better be. Okay, you know who you play <laughs> next week? Uh, we've got uh, what? Uh, Arkansas? No. No. Auburn. 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 There Auburn we go. Yeah. 11 o'clock in the morning. Ooh, that's going to be an early start yeah. for you there. Where, 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 let me go. You know, that look, down. the Aggies here, again, coming off of that loss to Miami, take care of business here Ooh. against, uh, who was that again? ULM, yeah. Justin, yeah, Monroe. Let's see, I'm worried about <laughs> Directional next week. Directional Louisiana yeah, I mean, come on. Terry <laughs> Bowden, man. This is, this is, but it, it's at A&M next week, Auburn. Okay. Yeah. So, SEC play starts. You know, Justin was saying the other day in the newsroom, what if, what if <laughs> Texas A&M runs the table here? He's already thinking about this because obviously they're, if they're, Alabama maybe not uh, yeah. not as strong as previous years. If they run the table, they'll be in the playoff. Mm, okay, that. here we go. I gotta see so this. Maybe this kind of just started. <laughs> That's a big <laughs> if. Yeah, they, they gotta they gotta get off it first. And then of course, uh, well Texas Tech plays West Virginia Tech won, oh, but they were playing yeah. Tarleton, so they should have won. So we're not even going down that road. No, we're not. We're not. No, but it's like, yeah, I didn't really, mention it they there. Won. Okay. Um, all right, got, here. Uh, West um, Virginia next week, Big Twelve. And then this Friday's is PSA and Friday night. Frank Harris did not play. Mm-hmm. He's got a bum toe. Yeah. Yeah, and that was a bummer of a game. Yeah, it was. Uh, so Eddie Lee Marburger getting the start there for the Roadrunners, and uh, they went down early. Got a nice hail mary there to get them back in the game at the end of the first half, and then uh, just could not stop 
the uh, Black Knights on defense at all. Army just yeah. kind of had their way with them on defense. In fact, UTSA's top defender, one of their top defenders, Trey Moore, apparently is going to be missing some time. He got hurt Friday. Frank Harris has been That's hurt. I don't see Harris is, I don't think Harris is going to play. There's Trey Moore right there. I don't <laughs> think Harris is going to play this week against Tennessee. Speaking of Tennessee. Wow. I don't see why they yeah. would play him. That's yeah. why I brought up Tennessee while ago because you know they dropped Wayne yeah. Stanley after losing to Florida. But man, that's that's going to be a, that's going to be yeah. a tough one because they're playing at Tennessee. Yeah, they're All playing right. at Tennessee. Then they have a bye week after that. So I'm guessing that you're not going to see Frank Harris for the next but, couple weeks, yeah. and then they're going to get him ready for conference. Allow, an allow me a final game. word here. Mm-hmm. Today's SFA's uh, 100th anniversary officially. Oh, congrats! And they beat Northwestern yeah. this weekend, 41 to seven. Axum Lumberjack. Nice. Oh, All right. All right. All right. All right. You know what? And I'm just going to give a shout out to the Bobcats. We scored 77 <laughs> points on Saturday. 77. Did we get everybody's school in? <laughs> we played Jackson State. They they. Don't have Deion Sanders anymore. Obviously, Deion oh. has moved on. Yeah. But, oh, you uh, mean the future head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, yeah. Deion Sanders? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When, the Cow- when the Cowboys yeah. inevitably, uh, what, choke, I guess, then uh, yeah, maybe yeah. Deion. Hey, <laughs> you don't know that. Yeah. That's called stepping in it and yeah. then stepping out. Stepping in, <laughs> stepping out. So, so okay. everybody, everybody, you won. Bobcast won. Beat Tech up. won. Mm-hmm. SFA won. UT Texas won. won. Ain't what a weekend. Whoa. Whoa. This will never happen again. <laughs> know, baby. Stop. Five and oh, no. Here we go. Yeah. Wow. Good job, guys. That. Thank you. All right. Thanks, we'll guys. see what happens next Monday. Axe and Jack. And the Cowboys won. So that's, that's right. Like, you know. <laughs> and you get the commanders on Thanksgiving. Oh. 943, 81 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9, and we'll be right back. Let's look out there with Zoo Cam, our friends the go? flamingos they're hiding in the shade mm. there they are there you know what i feel like every time we check in on them there's less and less less, and less. <laughs> well at least well, in our view <laughs> and also notice i mean I, you, you can tell we're creeping closer to fall the sun angle has yeah, changed that's yeah. true. from shadows. what we saw a couple of a couple of months ago so headed in the right direction there yeah. mr horn in theory in theory in theory yeah right. they, those flamingos are sick of the heat i can guarantee you <laughs> i don't talk flamingo but i just know <laughs> they told you in they, secret. <laughs> yes uh and we all are uh, this week's going to be very summer like though unfortunately uh the heat's still staying with us uh let's first start and uh, go outside for you and show you that we've got uh, mostly clear skies right now and and, and. Uh, the air quality there we go is uh, in the unhealthy for those who are sensitive. It's an ozone action day, okay? We've uh, been here before. Sometimes you get it when the air gets a little bit stagnant. Uh, so know that. If that's something that bugs you, if you are uh, asthmatic, this is something you do want to keep an eye on it. Uh, but it's in the uh, unhealthy for sensitive category. Uh, we may be there again tomorrow, too. Weather where you live outside right now, 79 degrees at the airport, 79 in New Braunfels. Otherwise, it's 77 in Seguin, Bernie, and Kerrville. After starting off with the 60s this morning in both Bernie and Kerrville. Looking at the dew points, uh, this really did make a difference last couple days. We had lower dew points, drier air. It helps us with our temperatures, makes it feel so much better in the morning and evening hours. Uh, these numbers aren't bad. We're in the muggy territory, but not necessarily super sticky. Uh, they'll start to slowly come up in the next few days. And you'll notice the humidity just a little bit more maybe by the end of the work week. Still won't be horrible, uh, but uh, just a little more humid. Uh, high temperatures today, we think 95 here in San Antonio. will be somewhere between 93 and 95 for most of the year, with the exception being the hill country, where uh, you'll see highs right around 90 later today. Uh, and here's a look at the hour-by-hour hour forecast. 91 at 2 o'clock. 95 at 5 p.m., 93 at 6 p.m., and then down into the 80s tonight. Mostly clear skies in southeast Chile winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. I wanted to show you the water vapor. Now, the water vapor shows us the humidity in the atmosphere, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere, and is, does a good job of showing us where we have spins and lows and highs. And what I want to point out is there's just not much here. You see that everything's kind of flowing west to east. There's not a lot of dips or spins, and that means there's not a lot there to generate showers and storms across the country. So we're still not into that fall pattern where we get some of these good storm systems digging south. So as long as that is the case, it's going to stay pretty quiet. And in fact, our ridge of high pressure, that summer heat high, tries to work back in Thursday and Friday, which means our temperatures really begin to jump up. Now there is an area of low pressure that will start out west and make its way across the country by the weekend. 
This is five o'clock Saturday. Tries to push a front close to our area by Sunday. Does it make it through? Still some questions here. It may not. But if it can get close enough to get us some showers and storms back in the forecast, that would be great. That'll be something we're watching towards the end of our forecast. But between now and then, it is uh, really pretty quiet. Out in the tropics, we've got a couple of areas here. 70% chance of development there off the coast of Africa. 30% chance of development on the east coast, although that doesn't look all that great. And then there's Nigel here, which is a category one hurricane. It's, it's uh, moving northwest at about 12 winds at 80 miles per hour. And this is going to curve back out into the Atlantic and not be a problem. Uh, in fact, and then it falls apart. So we're not going to worry too, too much about that. Uh, extended forecast 96 Tuesday, 97 Wednesday, 97 Thursday. Those aren't quite records, but they're close. Uh, 96 Friday. Fall officially begins on Saturday, which you know, staff is excited about. Yes. And then a 20% chance of some showers on Sunday. My wife, I, I, I walked out on the porch yesterday and there was like pumpkins and fall <laughs> decorations. So she's willing it. She, yes. Yeah, it's a good uh, idea. And I looked around the neighborhood and a lot of people are doing the same thing. We just, we, we're ready for it. Yeah, I, I need to get started too. Maybe that'll help. Maybe so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Yeah. Right now, 951, 82 degrees. And we come back and look at a new series that hopes to give an honest look at millennial parenting. The Oscar winning short film Hair Love continues on as a full animated series with a streaming program Young Love. CNN's Rick Domodella gives us a preview of the new series Young Love, which premieres on Max on Thursday. Hey guys, my name is Steven, and I'm a music producer. And I'm a very talented hairstylist, but most importantly, we're parents and we're a family. Dad, will you play something already? The family from the Oscar-winning short film Hair Love are back for an honest look at millennial parenting in the new animated series, Young Love. What is this all about? Modern problems require modern solutions. Why you got grill marks on the back of your shirt? Oh. Y'all never heard of George Foreman? Series creator and executive producer Matthew A. Cherry wanted to portray a modern family that was both funny and grounded in reality. I just really wanted to explore what that would look like. Just people that have big aspirations and dreams, but they're also really trying to be present for their young daughter. Welcome to my castle. You can drop your bag on the floor. My mom and dad will get them. Are we the hell? Worse, we're parents. Cherry was also determined to develop a cartoon that could be enjoyed by the entire household. The goal with the show was for it to be a co-viewing family show. You know, we wanted it to be something that uh, kids could watch with the parents and could also watch with the grandparents. Money ain't everything. Having somebody to experience the good and bad times with is what's important. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Hey. <laughs> Sorry, I'm familiar with that one. <laughs> uh, temperatures right now sitting at uh, 82. Uh, we're coming up around 95 this afternoon. It's a hot week. We've got temperatures in the upper 90s. Uh, really, the rest of the work week. So summer is still holding on. Fall officially begins Saturday, and hopefully on Sunday we'll get a, a front boundary close enough to get us at least some small rain chances. But just looking at that, I still think we're done with the hundreds, right? Yeah, yeah I think that's we're good. done with the hundreds. Okay. Yeah, it's it's going to get close, but not quite. Okay, yeah. at least we're not there. Yeah. <laughs> Have a great day, guys. And a good week. <laughs>